Tonight on Super Size vs. Super Skinny, Dr. Christian returns to America's fattest town, McAllen, Texas, looking for signs of hope in a city in crisis. It's scary when your doctor says if you don't start exercising and changing your lifestyle, you're going to die. Swapping diets tonight, it's pizza-loving Thomas versus overactive, under-eating Linda. Would that be enough for you? For a start. <laughs> and supersized Thomas goes to America to meet a woman whose obesity nearly killed her. Having a doctor tell you that you won't even get to see your baby and Emma Wolf investigates how the pressures on teenage girls can lead to eating disorders. When someone becomes curvy, it's all of a sudden she's gone fat. Welcome to Super Size versus Super Skinny. Dr. Christian has been witnessing firsthand the horrors of McAllen's obesity epidemic as a warning to us back home. Are you serious? He's been investigating the devastating effects of the city's weight problems from birth. Many times we have problems with shoulder dystocia, then you have to do some special maneuvers to try to get that baby delivered if you can. Right through to death. I have read they are allowed to remove limbs to facilitate placing the body in the retort. I mean, it's just, it's horrendous, isn't it? My time here in McAllen is almost up, and I have been genuinely shocked by some of the things that I've seen. Obesity levels are at a record high, and they really have their work cut out for them if they want to turn things around. But I'm pleased to say that there are promising signs that the locals do want to make changes. It's 4.30 in the morning. While most of the city still sleeps, a small band of work colleagues are on a life-changing mission to fight the flab and get fit. All right, good morning. We're going to start off with jumping jacks. Ready? And begin. These are city employees who, before dawn has even broken, are taking personal responsibility for battling McAllen's obesity crisis, starting with themselves. Awesome, awesome. Good job, good job. Make sure that you alternate and do the other leg when you get to the other side. 20 local government workers now meet before dawn five times a week for an hour-long session of fat-burning workouts. It's a program initiated by city employee Roy Cantu. Over a year ago, uh, my doctor told me I needed to lose weight. I weighed 284 pounds. I had diabetes, high blood pressure, and high cholesterol. It's scary when your doctor says if you don't start exercising and changing your lifestyle, you're going to die. Terrified that at 20 stone he might not reach his 50th birthday, Roy decided to change his life and found himself a personal trainer. Yeah, there you go. After losing five stone, his doctor took him off all his medication. And I was exercising on a daily basis, I was eating healthier, I was still losing weight, and I went to my boss and I said, if I can do it, I think we should do something. Roy's boss realized that such a dramatic lifestyle change could benefit the whole workforce. I feel so good doing this every day that I, can't, I look forward to it all the time. It's made a huge difference. Good, good. Together, these workers have lost close to a staggering 13 stone. Roy's program is proving truly inspirational. There are plans to extend it to another 800 employees in the city. OK, so getting up at 5 in the morning may not be everyone's cup of tea, myself included, but these guys really are seeing the benefits. They're losing weight, their blood tests are improving, they're coming off medication. Obesity costs the economy an awful lot of money, and it's not just these guys that will benefit, but their economy and their city too. This is a really important lesson for us back in the UK. Back home, Dr Christian's fighting a war on weight at both ends of the scales. He's chosen eight super sizes and eight super skinnies to spend two intense days in his feeding clinic in order to confront their extreme eating. And he's ready to make his selection. Thomas, come on over here. So, Thomas, you are going to be swapped with Linda. Come over, Linda. Thomas, nice to meet you. Nice to meet you. Are you looking forward to the food swap? Yes. 
It's gonna be different. Yeah. Do you like pizza? Yeah, I love pizza. Good, because <laughs> I live off of the stuff. Do you like salad? Yeah. Yeah, I like things yeah. like bacon, avocado, I'm, chicken salad with I was brought up on a farm, so... Oh, like fish? Um, not normally, but no. I'll give anything for yeah, that. Like salmon and mackerel and things like that. Salmon isn't too bad. Yeah. So do you think I'm very skinny, then? Your wrists are tiny. <laughs> It's a bit smaller than you. Yeah, just a bit. <laughs> I just thought that Thomas was the biggest one. Yeah, he's the biggest one there. <laughs> Linda hasn't got a, a chance in hell. I've still seen him. There's a lot of a lot of bad food. Pizza delivery driver Thomas's favourite food is, you've guessed it, pizza, whereas healthy eater Linda avoids high-fat foods. At opposite ends of the eating spectrum, these two can actually learn a lot from each other. 23-year-old pizza delivery man Thomas Barnes has one, perhaps unsurprising, major weakness. I tend to eat a lot of pizza. I enjoy it. I suppose in the average week I'd eat about 10 to 12 pizzas. Weighing in at 27 stone 10 pounds, Thomas has put on a stone a year since the age of 12. He now has a morbidly obese BMI of over 55, more than double what it should be. And with pizza on the menu at work as well, his favorite food is too hard to resist. As I go, I, I, t I tend to eat in the car while I'm driving. I have lunch about one o'clock time, and I'd probably have a pizza. In the evening, there's normally pizzas and whatnot that are made wrong, and I'd eat, eat them. And after a long day, it's off down the local chippy for a spot of dinner. It's just not the best for me, like, and I know that. Thomas avoids eating fruit, vegetables or fish, and his unhealthy eating habits are preventing him from fulfilling his boyhood dream of becoming a farmer like his grandfather. I can't tend to get the job I want because of my size and people just look at you and just think you're lazy. But that's not the case. I just really want to be back outside, working outside. But it's not just his size that's preventing Thomas from doing the job he wants. His massive food binges, unsurprisingly, leave him feeling heavy and bloated. I hardly ever got energy because I don't think I'm getting what I need out of my food. So I'm having to supplement with energy drinks and that, try and perk myself up. Always feeling tired. I'd say if, if I don't change it, it'll be about five to ten years before I'm either disabled or so unwell that I can't function properly. I don't want to die young. In contrast to Thomas's dreadful diet of fatty foods, 52-year-old glamorous granny Linda Chick reckons she's got the perfect diet, so can't understand why she's so skinny. People say to me, well, you've got a good, healthy diet, and uh, when I see, you know, what some people eat, um, yeah, I think mine, mine's quite healthy. But although many of the foods Linda eats are healthy, her portion sizes are way too small. She weighs a mere seven stone because she doesn't get enough calories. As a result, she has a dangerously low BMI of 16.83, compared to the healthy range of 18.5 to 25. I do think that I eat enough, yeah, but I mean, I don't count calories or anything. I'd like porridge for my breakfast, probably with some honey and maybe some fruit, blueberries or banana or something. Sometimes I'll have scrambled eggs, like scrambled eggs, grilled tomatoes, sometimes eggs and bacon. Linda's meals are healthy, but they are low calorie. And her active job means she's on her feet all day. As a result, she constantly burns up more calories than she eats. And when Linda isn't working, she's working out. When I went to boxing, it was just my niche, I love it. Linda's passion for exercise and her low calorie diet followed years of serious illness when her daughters were young. She got ill, didn't she? She had yeah. cancer and lost all her hair, and then she kind of come back with vengeance, and she just really started to look after herself. Her illness meant Linda's weight dropped to five and a half stone. She made a full recovery, but she's never fully regained her weight. I haven't got cancer anymore. I haven't got any aches and pains. I can work 57 hours a week and still look after the grandchildren, so... 
but Linda is seriously under eating and her low calorie diet is damaging her health and her looks. To me, I just look a bit bony and a bit <laughs> compared to what I did. For overactive, under eating Linda, this is one more fight she desperately needs to win. I'd like to keep healthy and fit for myself, for the family, and I want to enjoy my life. Low-cal Linda and pizza-loving Thomas both urgently need to change their eating habits. But before Super Size takes on Super Skinny, Dr Christian is sending Thomas stateside. 27 Stone 10 pizza-loving Thomas Barnes is in Jackson, Missouri, where Dr Christian's prescribed him a supersized shock. I'm kind of excited and nervous. I'm expecting it to be a good eye-opener, learn some new things. He's heading to meet Robin Jones, who's even heavier than he is. At just 30 years old, she's already debilitated by her weight. To be 35 stone is, it's rough, because getting around is hard. Just breathing is hard sometimes. Robin's love of fatty takeaways and sugary drinks began when she was a child with a compulsion to keep eating. Whenever I felt bad or felt good, I would eat. <laughs> but eight years ago, Robin nearly paid the ultimate price for her obesity when she gave birth to her son, Andrew. They had to rush me in to do an emergency C-section. The doctor told my family that I would probably stroke out on the table. Having a doctor tell you that you won't even get to see your baby. Is really, really hard to handle. Thankfully, Robin and son Andrew survived her traumatic ordeal. But will her continued health problems be a wake up call for Thomas? Hello there. Hi. I'm, Tom. I'm Robin. Nice to meet you. Nice to meet you. Come on in. I've got two different masks that I use. Robin wastes no time getting Thomas to experience her struggles. She first shows him the sleep apnea mask she wears at night. Now with this, you put it on, just like this, lift up. The mask forces air through her restricted air passages. And then you want to feel what it, the pressure is? No, no. It's a lot, isn't it? To take it off, you just undo it. Oh, that is a, certainly a lot of pressure, isn't it? Yes, it is. Oh, dear. Oh, thank you. So how does Andrew cope? He doesn't like his friends to see me oh. because they taunt him and tease him about it. I mean, the weight has limited me being able to do a lot of things that I'd love to do with him. I'd love to be able to go outside and ride bikes with him or take him to the park and run around but I'm not able to do any of that. It's such a shame that she uh, struggles to get around. What was most shocking for me was the sleep apnea machine. The pressure was unbelievable. That pressure is down you. And to have to have that every night to sleep, well, I could just never do that myself. But Thomas may have to if he doesn't change his eating habits. Next up, it's a supersized food shop. This would be the first place I stop, is to pick up the cream horns. Oh, really? Because you can eat four of them before you know it. Thomas is soon amazed at the scale of the food on sale. Christ, your loaves are big here. This is ridiculous. 25 pounds of sugar. Everything's bigger over here, and that's part of the problem. Having worked up an appetite, Robin and Thomas head off for brunch. Dr. Christian's heading their way to see if his transatlantic shock treatment is having the desired effect on Thomas. Thomas's great weakness when it comes to food is with takeaways. He works as a pizza delivery driver. There couldn't really be a worse job for him. Robin's great weakness too is with takeaway food. She loves her fast food, her drive-throughs, her takeout. So they've got real similarities there and I hope to get them talking a bit about that. Do you think that when you start out trying to lose weight that you would cut down on your breakfast? 
Good morning. Good morning. How are you? <laughs> Not too bad. Surprise. <laughs> Thomas. Yeah. What is this that you're eating? You're supposed to be looking after him. Setting an example. Well, did you do this? You Was know. this your suggestion? Be honest with me. Yeah. <laughs> it's the closest to an English one, Miguel. All right, I won't tell you off then. I'll let you <laughs> off. Is it easy for you to see how weight can creep on out here quite yeah. easily without really noticing it? Yeah? Yeah. Right, you guys okay. finish up and we'll go back to yours, OK? Back at Robin's, Dr Christian is keen to talk to them both about her sleep apnea. Can you imagine having to sleep with that all night on your head, getting used to it? It's also a bit of a passion killer. Does it shock you? Uh, yes, it does. I couldn't imagine wearing that in bed. The other treatment for sleep apnea, besides that, is... Guess what? Weight loss. Is weight loss. I know it seems like a mountain to climb, but your sleep apnea will correct itself completely were you to lose the weight, and that's another reason why it's so important. Robin is now trying to lose enough weight for bariatric surgery, but Dr Christian wants Thomas to mend his ways before he's in need of such a drastic solution. I'm going to see you back in England, and I've got a little bit of homework for you to do before then. I want you to think about your job, because there lies trouble. There is temptation everywhere. How are you going to avoid that? OK, so, Thomas, good luck with that, and I'll see you back home. See you Robin, then. thank you so much. It was lovely to meet you. I'm off. See you guys. See you later. Bye-bye. I think my size did shock Tom, and I think it was kind of a wake-up call for him, that it's not that far away from happening to him if he doesn't change. You have a safe trip. Will do. Look after yourself. Bye, Bye. boy. Oh, I can't wait to get back to England and make some changes in my life. I'm ready for it. Back in the UK, the feeding clinic is ready and waiting for pizza-loving Thomas and under-eating Linda. Dr Christian's hoping that by consuming each other's extreme diets, they'll both be shocked into changing their ways. Super skinny Linda doesn't realise that her low-calorie diet and highly active lifestyle are the reason for her worryingly low weight. She's concerned that being underweight will ruin her looks and cause health problems in the future. Looking at your food diary, there are a few areas where you're not quite getting it right. And the first thing, probably obviously, is in just calorie content overall. It's just not quite enough. You are under eating. Why mm. do you think that is? Don't know. I've never thought about that, really. I just thought that, you know, since I've been ill, I haven't really been able to put it on. But whether that's... That's the reason, I don't know. One thing I really want to know is what your concerns are about your weight and therefore your motivations for gaining weight. What would they be? Obviously osteoporosis with my age, um, you know, because I am underweight and I know that's a risk. Osteoporosis, if you are very underweight and then going through menopause and beyond, is a risk factor. Weight-bearing exercise is one thing, but a good balanced diet is, is very important for that too. And what about how you look? Because yeah, my concern is you quite like how you look, don't you? I do when I'm dressed. <laughs> but I don't when I'm undressed particularly. I, I do know that I'm bony. You know, I don't look. So you'd like a curvier figure? Yeah, I would like a curvier figure. I'd like to look like Jessica Rabbit, if possible. <laughs> <laughs> Use your time here in the Diet Swap to actually convince yourself that you can eat more in volume. And once you've done that and you've stretched your tummy a little bit, when you go off on your healthy eating plan, you won't find it such a shock, because I don't want you to go, oh, do you know what, it's too much, I can't manage this. You really need to give it your all. You will still be eating healthily, just tweaking the, um, the different balances of, of food groups a little bit more, and I think you'll see big success. All right, Linda? Yeah, Listen, so. nice Nice to see you. And you. Okay. Thank you bye very bye. much. Bye-bye. Pizza-loving Thomas eats enough for one and a half healthy men. After meeting 35 Stone Robin in America, Dr Christian wants to make sure Thomas realises how terrible his diet really is. At the rate you're going, you will weigh more than Robin does when you get to the same age as her. That's very shocking. Yeah, I didn't think I was that bad, but obviously, yeah. In your food diary, you had no fruit or vegetables whatsoever. And if you're going to tell me that tomatoes on pizza count, which you're about to do, aren't you, then I'm <laughs> going to slap you, because <laughs> it doesn't. You're going to be swapping diets with somebody who eats quite healthily, actually, um, but doesn't quite get things right. But for you, this is going to be fantastic. What I'm hoping that you'll find is that you will quite like a lot of her food choices, and you'll be pleasantly surprised. All right? 
Yeah. Thomas, best of luck with it. Thank you. Okay, bye bye. Time for the two day diet swap to begin. And it starts with breakfast. Linda gets Thomas's double sausage sandwich on thick white buttered bread. Yeah, that's nice. While fruit avoiding Thomas gets her low fat yogurt with blueberries and honey and a specially blended fruit juice. Uh, it's not what I'd normally have. Oh, this is lovely. Mm, it's very nice, isn't it? Mm. Very good for you as well. But what will Thomas make of the orange, ginger, and beetroot juice? Oh, you can definitely taste the beetroot in there. Mm. Like quite earthy. Mm. It's really nice. It is, it is nice. Yeah, do you think now, then, if you like that, it's something that you could um, start doing yourself? It's really quick and easy, and I could do that at home. Yeah. And it wouldn't take long at all. What a start. Linda manages to eat most of Thomas's sausage sandwich. Oh, you destroyed that. Mm. Did a good job there. I know, I was hungry, actually. Uh, would that be enough for you? For a starter. <laughs> Three hours later, it's lunchtime. Are you hungry? No, not really. Thomas has lined up a takeaway combo of deep fried chicken wings, potato wedges, and salty dips for Linda. She's got him a small baked potato with cheese and coleslaw, a mixed salad, and a blueberry muffin. These chips are nice. And the wedges. Mm. Not keen on this cold. Aren't you? No. I do miss the lack of um, salad and fruit and veg with your diet. I mean, I've had a sausage sandwich with white bread this morning, which is nice and a novelty. Yeah. I wouldn't want it all the time. Oh, you're gnawing away at them old chicken wings there. <laughs> I could do with another plate to put them on. <laughs> Despite not liking coleslaw, Thomas has no problems polishing off Linda's lunch. Oh, that's lovely. My favourite is blueberry, I think. It's hardly surprising Thomas has enjoyed the small portion of cheese on Linda's potato as he's used to a diet of large pizzas dripping in cheese. It's clearly going to be a tough challenge persuading Thomas to ditch his non-stop pizza habit. Thomas, welcome to my world of pizza. 24 pizzas. This is the number of pizzas that you're getting through in a month. Pizza by itself, not a terribly unhealthy food, actually. As part of a healthy, balanced diet, it's absolutely fine. The trouble is, this is your staple. This is the main component of your diet. Just to break down pizza a little bit, here I have the total amount of cheese that you're getting through on your pizzas in a year. It's 18 and a half kilos of cheese. The problem with cheese is it's very high in fat and it's very high in saturated fat. You can see all the oil that's coming out of this warm cheese there. In fact, Thomas gets a whopping 8.7 kilos of saturated fat a year just from pizza. That's a third of the massive 26 kilos of saturated fat in his whole diet, which is almost two and a half times the recommended amount. It's an awful lot. The same applies to salt. 2.2 kilograms of salt you're getting just from the pizzas alone. In 12 months, Thomas consumes a total of five kilograms of salt, which is twice what he should eat. Salt, we think, leads to higher levels of blood pressure, all right? And high levels of blood pressure leads to heart and kidney disease. Let me show you what they look like over here. Let's talk about the kidney, first of all. That's a kidney, really, that has failed badly. It's sclerosed, it's scarred up. And the reason is because of high blood pressure. Ironically, kidneys control blood pressure. It's one of the organs that do that. The more scarred and the more damaged it becomes, the worse it can control your blood pressure. And so the vicious cycle continues. The heart, on the other hand, that's a cross-section through a heart. If the heart is having to do excess work by pumping high-pressured blood around, it gets bigger. The bigger it gets, the less blood it can pump with each contraction. An inefficient heart is a heart that is failing, and it will eventually lead to death. I've seen young people with heart failure, and I've seen young people die of it too, so don't underestimate it. When I was looking at the pizza, all I could see was that big, big fat of cheese and all that salt and lard and I thought, hmm, doesn't look as attractive now. So I kind of brought it home quite a bit. 
27 Stone 10 Thomas lives on a monstrous diet of pizza and takeaways. 7 Stone Super Skinny Linda chooses varied and healthy foods, but she fails to eat enough calories for her hectic lifestyle. So Dr. Christian's getting them to swap diets to help them see where they're going wrong. And it's time for dinner. Ready to feed like a queen? Yeah, yeah, we've got to swap these. <laughs> Thomas gets Linda's biggest meal of the day, leek and potato soup with a wholemeal baguette and crisps, while she gets 10 massive slices of deep pan chicken pizza, loaded with fatty chorizo sausage and cheese, as well as pork ribs, fizzy drink and cookies. It's one and a half times the calories she normally eats in a whole day. Does it look a lot to you when you look on and see somebody else eating it? Yeah, it looks a lot more. Because, I mean, that should feed four people, mm. not just me. While Thomas eats for four, Linda barely eats for one. But his highly calorific meals are already starting to have an effect on her. I know this afternoon, after I'd eaten the chips, my stomach was actually rumbling about an hour afterwards. Really? Mm. Linda's developing an appetite for more food. And Thomas has already started to appreciate the flavours in her low-calorie diet. I'd much prefer to have good home-cooked food like th that you eat. Mm. I will definitely be avoiding that as much as possible and perhaps just have it for a treat. However, this massive pizza isn't proving a treat for Linda. Yeah, that's enough for me. It's oh, you've done well. A bit boring now. <laughs> it really does bring home I eat way too much, watching her struggle. Whether I'll feel tired tomorrow, I don't know, but I don't feel too bad, you know, but I'm sure I'm going to get some effects. Next morning, Thomas is presented with a low-carb breakfast of tin mackerel and fruit juice, while Linda fails to finish his two huge bowls of cereal and full-fat milk. And she faces another challenge at lunchtime. Surprise, surprise. <laughs> She gets more deep pan spicy chicken pizza, while Thomas gets more fish, a tuna salad with pita bread, along with a blueberry yogurt and fruit juice. This is the most calorific meal Linda has given him in the entire diet swap. Do you think that's a reasonable size lunch? It's something that you could. Yeah, it's a very reasonable size lunch. Mm. I didn't expect to see this much on the plate. No. While Thomas is enjoying Linda's varied meals, the monotony of his pizza diet is taking its toll on her. How do you feel about having pizza again after having it last night? It's OK. Um, I wouldn't want it again tomorrow. Yeah, I've had enough, thanks. I don't think any more pizzas for me for a few weeks. Well, maybe tonight. <laughs> I really don't know how Tom eats so many pizzas. It's, like, really boring. <laughs> Next, Dr. Christian wants them to compare photos to see how they reach their current unhealthy sizes. This is when I was about five. Mm -hmm, very cute. <laughs> I was a bit tubby then still. Mm. And then this would be when I was probably about ten. But my mum, as you can see, is large and I was starting to get man boobs. <laughs> on a bit of weight. <laughs> this is when I was about fifteen. This brings back good memories because it remembers all the good times. Mm. And you can see, mm. I'm, I'm getting big, really big then. Like, creeped on yeah. over time. Mm. Um, blimey, that's a long time ago, Tom. <laughs> I'd be probably about 18 there. I think I'd have to have my army yeah. uniform taken in. The next one is when I'm in Hong Kong, so I'd be about 22, probably. So I was quite fit and healthy, really, there, you know. And then this one. You know, that I had Hodgkin's lymphoma. You see, I've lost a lot of my hair there. I didn't lose it completely, but I decided to, like, shave what I'd got. I think I was about three months into my chemotherapy there, and since then I've never got back those extra few pounds, so... Although she made a full recovery, Linda believes her illness has prevented her gaining weight. In fact, she's just not getting enough calories from her meals. Unless she accepts she needs to change and pushes herself to eat more, she will remain underweight. One person who's been investigating unhealthy relationships with food is journalist and recovered anorexic Emma Wolf. Across the series, Emma's been taking an inside look at the world of eating disorders, meeting those affected and those who treat them. 
She's met male sufferers and found out how this illness is on the rise in older women. But still the most common group of people to suffer from eating disorders are teenage girls, making up as many as 50% of all anorexia sufferers. To understand the pressures on teenage girls, Emma's on her way to meet Aria, whose anorexia began in her early teens. I'm Aria, I'm 21 years old. I reckon my anorexia started when I was about 14. Between the ages of eight and 19, Aria was a trapeze artist, and during this time, she became unhealthily body conscious. We had to wear quite tight-fitting clothes, and I don't know, we did a lot of comparisons with each other, so who had the biggest arms, who had the biggest legs, who was more muscly, and I think that just provoked the anorexic mindset. I know the first trigger point, and it was from when my, me and my friends were just eating sweets and biscuits or whatnot. So I counted everything we had that day, and I had about 6,000 calories or something like that. But that somehow scared me that I'd eaten for three people. At her worst, Aria was eating as little as 300 calories a day. When you lose that weight, you become addicted to losing the weight and it, you feel proud of yourself because she's taking control. It took years for Aria to accept she needed help. Now she's having regular therapy, including weekly supervised meals with an eating disorder nurse. Really nice. Enjoyed it? I enjoyed it as well, which is really hard for me to admit normally. I don't want to be anorexic anymore. Um, I'm going down the right road for that. Now that Aria is recovering, Emma wants to understand the causes of her teenage anorexia. So where are you in terms of your recovery? I'm getting so, so much better than I was. Um, I'm not getting as triggered as I was getting before, like, constant talk about food, basically, like, in anything. I thought the world was against me. Mm. So even, like, adverts, mm. I'd think, why are you always talking about food? Mm. Like, can you just, like, leave me alone sort of thing? Really? Do you mind me asking, what was your sort of lowest weight? Uh, yeah, my lowest weight was around six stone. Right. I mean, do you think it's been harder for you because of the pressures on young women? I've never really been into that whole looking at celebrities for, you know, to lose weight sort of thing. It's not been my style at all. And what I hate is when they say, oh, she's so proud of her curves, she looks wonderful. And then when someone else isn't as curvy but becomes curvy, it's all of a sudden she's gone fat. Yeah. And it really, really angers me when I read that. I really want to like, call them up and say, you don't know what you're putting in it's your magazine. It's quite damaging, isn't it? It really is. What's your goal in terms of moving forward and your weight and things like that? Anything that will get my periods back, yeah. basically. Because um, that means that's my weight. Yeah. I don't have... Cause it's hard that's to judge it. the best way to do it. If you can yeah. just have a physical goal, yeah. then you know that things are right. Yeah. You know that things have clicked back into place. Exactly. Definitely stay in touch. Yeah. Yeah. Meeting Aria was really, really lovely. She's got loads of challenges ahead, but I've got no doubt she'll do it. She's such a strong character. It also made me just realise all the pressures on women, young women, older women, you know, the pressures to be beautiful and to stay thin. Research shows that young people in particular feel they should look a certain way and 72% of girls agree that too much attention is paid to the way female celebrities look. But there's one organisation that tackles this head on. Emma's joining a group of teenagers to take part in Media Smart, a new government initiative dealing with body image in the media. I'm going to show you some images and I want you to respond to them about what you notice about them, OK? Whoa. Whoa. That is some difference. They've completely changed her into someone else that she's not. The spots have gone. In the first picture, like, she's so natural and it shows you how computers and that can make mm. you look sort of fake. What are your thoughts about that? They've took away every lump and bump. <coughs> They've made the leg look perfect and they make the viewers feel like we need to look like that. So how does it make you feel when you see 
how you're meant to be on the left, how does that make you feel as women? For me, when I see like, beautiful models, I'm like, wow, do people actually really look like that yeah. in real life? You try to aim mm. to look like that, but it's not going to happen. I wouldn't want to look up to women with such precise figures and everything so perfect, because again, perfect and natural are completely two different things. They're so young and yet they're really, really savvy and they know what they're talking about. Um, when they talk about sort of advertisers and campaigns and models and all of that, they really, they've got their heads screwed on right. And I think um, the advertising industry has got a lot on their hands if they're going to take on this generation of young women. While only 19% of teenage girls are overweight, a shocking 67% think they need to lose weight. So organisations like Media Smart are vital in educating people and promoting a healthy relationship with our bodies. Emma's journey across this series has shown there's no one reason why people develop eating disorders. Peer pressure and media pressures can play a part, but there are also very individual reasons. I think I got an eating disorder because at the time my mum was suffering from an eating disorder. It started when I was pregnant with my son, my first child. It was just to lose a few pounds, actually. Yeah. But gradually the fat was going yeah. and the carbohydrate. She's also discovered there's a lot of positive work being done from neurological research. If you have anorexia nervosa, this particular structure appears not to be working properly. To online therapy. If you had a binge eating moment, and you could log on 24 hours a day if you wanted. Ensuring that sufferers have hope of a healthier future. All the different people I've met have had very different journeys, but one thing unites them, and that is the bravery they've shown in speaking out. I think they've shown us that eating disorders are more common than we think, but that they can be beaten. Back in the feeding clinic, Thomas serves Linda an afternoon snack. It's what he eats at work while driving around. A total of four double packs of chocolate and two huge energy drinks. I like chocolate, but that's a lot of chocolate. Yeah. It looks worse now, I see it on a plate like that. Calorie avoiding Linda tucks into Thomas's sugary snacks and manages to eat almost half of them. I think that's enough for me. Oh, Four yeah. chocolate bars. Yeah, we've done well. And just a few hours later, it's time for their final meal in the feeding clinic. Surprise, surprise, it's pizza. Oh. This time, Linda gets Thomas's portion of pepperoni pizza with a cheesy stuffed crust that he'd share with his girlfriend while he gets a repeat of lunchtime. Another small helping of tuna salad and pita bread, a brunch bar and an apple. Enjoy. Yeah. <laughs> Both of them immediately tuck in, despite facing food and portion sizes they'd normally avoid. So I certainly realised since I've been eating your diet, I can manage to eat more carbs. This is Linda's last chance to show she can force herself to eat more and overcome her unhealthy low-calorie eating habits. Do you reckon you'll eat more carbs and complex? Yeah, but not pizza, as I said, you know. No, I think you're sick of them by now. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah that's enough for me. I can't eat anymore. You've done well again. I'm full up after all those chocolates and energy drink as well. I'm like... <laughs> Linda's eaten most of the calorific pizza but will she now up her intake of carbs to balance her active lifestyle? Yeah, I think slow but sure. You know, I don't want to put on an amazing amount of weight. I just want to see a difference in my body shape. I thought it'd be a punishment to eat them sort of foods, but it's actually a pleasure. Both Thomas and Linda seem to have learnt from swapping their terrible diets, and Dr Christian now hopes they're prepared for a future of healthy eating. 
So this is the moment that you have all been waiting for. I have your diet plans here. You're going to go off back home soon, and these are what you have to stick to. Thomas, if we start with you, a bit of advice really is avoid temptation. That's going to be the hardest thing for you. You will be surrounded by the foods that you crave. So get your friends on board. Get them to wrap your knuckles when you're eating what you shouldn't be eating. And Linda, with you really, I think, you know, most things are right. I think you can afford to relax more about your diet and the sorts of foods that you're eating. Okay, and I don't don't want you to worry too much about actual numbers of weight gain. Provided that you can make these changes, I will be happy and the weight gain will follow in time. It's a chance for me to find out whether I can actually, you know, put a little bit of weight on, be a bit more curvy. I'm looking forward to starting, starting my new diet. Yeah, I feel really positive how things are going to go when I get home. And with this diet plan, it's going to really help me and it'll make a big change to my life. <laughs> Dr. Christian will be checking up on their progress in two months' time. It's been two months since pizza-loving Thomas and overactive, under-eating Linda began their new healthy meal plans. Now it's time to see how well they've got on. I'm not worried about stepping on the scales today. I don't think I've put on a lot of weight, but I think I'm looking a little bit more, a uh, little bit more rounded. Hopefully, in the right places. I am very worried about stepping on the scales to see what's gone on. I feel as I've lost a bit of weight, but we'll just have to see what happens. Linda, wow, nice to see you and again. Yeah, and you. You're looking very well. Thank you. So something's been going well, hasn't it? Yeah. <laughs> I think it was important that you made changes to your diet. Your diet wasn't terrible, but the quantity was really very, very little, wasn't it? I think definitely the carbohydrates probably weren't enough. You look much healthier. You look less drawn in at your face and things, and that's a good sign. And you must have noticed that. Yeah, definitely. I think that, you know, it's good that I've accomplished what I have, even though I might not have put on, you know, a major amount. Yeah, I think I've tried. But you've, you're pleased you've given it your best. Yeah, yeah. definitely, yeah. Good. good. All right, Linda, nice to see you. OK. OK, thank thanks. You. Thomas, hello. I nearly didn't recognise you then. Huh. How are you? I'm feeling good, yeah. You're looking incredibly well. Thanks. You've lost some weight, haven't you? A little bit. <laughs> I think you have. You're still working delivering pieces, aren't you? Yes. So how are you avoiding that temptation? I don't see uh, the food at work as something that I would want to eat. I mean, this is all very impressive stuff. Are you surprised at yourself? I was shocked, yeah, how I enjoy food differently. And how do you feel now? What's different? I don't find it so hard to get out of bed in the morning and I don't feel so tired when I get home from work. Yeah. Are you proud of yourself? Yeah, I am proud of myself, yeah. Well, that all sounds very good. Thomas, thank you very much. Good to see yes, you. Thank okay. you. Time for Thomas and Linda to be reunited. Great to see you. Looking great. Nice, how are you? <laughs> Thank you. How have you got on? Feeling good. Yourself? Yeah. Yeah, I'm good. Yeah. It'll be interesting to see how much we've lost in gain today, won't it? Oh yes. So, no more pizzas. Oh, I haven't actually. Really? Right. I've one. had a couple. <laughs> are you really? Not as many as last time I saw you. <laughs> oh. <laughs> I didn't want any for a while. Oh, I can't. So. I can't blame you. Well, hello you two. Excuse me, Thomas. I'm going to squeeze in. Good to see you again, both of you guys. Yeah. yeah? How do you think he looks? Yeah, I think he looks great. I can definitely tell he's lost weight, definitely. And what about with Linda? She looks so much healthier, a lot more colour in her. She does, doesn't she? Yeah. I think you both look dramatically different people, which is fantastic. Linda, I'm going to start with you. Well, the first thing I want to say to you is, noticeably, without sounding um, improper, your bust <laughs> and your bottom... Thomas is too polite to tell you this, but your bust <laughs> and your bottom have got big, haven't they? Definitely. And certainly doing the measurements, that is true. And you have gained weight. You've gained a very respectable two pounds in weight. <laughs> it's not masses, but it's a start. And it shows that whatever you're doing is right. You had two jobs to do. You had to make changes yourself, but you also had to teach Thomas. And you certainly did teach Thomas. You, you've been a real star, I have to say. Again, you know, you were stuck in a rut quite a lazy rut of really, really bad habits. Temptation was all around you. In any situation like that, I worry that unless we can remove you from that temptation, it's going to be very difficult for you to make changes. But actually, you've done it, haven't you? You know you've lost weight. In an ideal world, what were you aiming for? Maybe a stone. Maybe a stone. Maybe, yeah. Do you think he's done that? That's yeah. a lot. Are you sure? Yeah, I think he's lost a stone. Thomas, you haven't lost a stone. I don't know. You've lost three 
stone oh my and God. two pounds. Really? And, you know, that belt's been coming in notch by notch. Six and a half inches you've lost around your tummy. And it really shows, yeah, doesn't it? Yeah, that's amazing. Well Please done. done. It's made me happy anyway, certainly. So it should have done. But this is the right way forward for the both of you. And I'm really, really proud of both of you. So really well done. Yeah, thank you. Thanks. <laughs> I think I'm getting closer to, like, having the sort of shape that I'd like. I definitely feel a bit more curvy. Yeah, it's nice. And I've noticed my clothes are a bit tighter, so it'll be a new wardrobe soon. So <laughs> good excuse. Never expected to lose that much. So I was really happy about that. No turning back at all.